Hi, it's John of JJ Rich Millinery and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from the title of this video, this Millinery Showcase episode will be a little bit different. And in this episode, we will be talking about some high profile designer, uh, not somebody I found on social media, but somebody that's known in the industry and is uh, very well known. And that person is Justin Smith. Just want to say, sorry I've not been around for the last couple of weeks. I've been away on holiday, which was amazing. I can't really tell, like, my time is going. I didn't tan that much, to be fair, but um, I was definitely a lot browner than I am. Um, on the screen now, you'll, there'll be some images. That's hopefully if I get permission from my friends. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen a lot of my holiday snaps on Insta Stories. So if you're not on Instagram or if you're not following me on Instagram, check out the link below and that will tell you where to find me on Instagram. It was an amazing holiday. Like, yeah, I drank way too much, way too many uh, beautiful people, stayed in a lovely hotel. Uh, it was just, it was amazing. I made some good friends went with some good friends and um, I even found a tiny pair of swim shorts because everybody was wearing swim shorts. I had board shorts, put them on the first day and I was like, mm, no, I need to go shopping for some budgie smugglers. So once again, if you did see that on Instagram, I'm very sorry I was hung over that day when I decided to post a picture of myself hung over. <sighs> yeah, sometimes you don't put things on social media. So for those of you that don't know who Justin Smith is, let me give you a rundown on his history. So from 98 to 02, Justin was creative director and head of avant-garde for the Tony and Guy Group. Justin graduated from the Royal College of Art with a Masters in Millinery after studying for around six years. Justin then set up his own label, J Smith Esquire, in 2007 after the launch of his graduate collection. Justin has produced all his collections in-house, from his 2008 collection, Dance With Me, to his more recent collection, Gold, which is about to launch for Spring Summer 18. Justin has shown at London, Paris and Milan Fashion Weeks, as well as up-and-coming weeks such as Jakarta Fashion Week and Rome Couture. Justin also has collaborated with high fashion design brands such as Stella McCartney and Moschino. So I've always been obsessed with Justin Smith since I was first made aware of him and I was made aware by my tutor. When I was studying, we were in the group I was in, everybody was doing very, nothing wrong with, but very traditional, learning the traditions and I was straight in there like, I want to do something different, I want to do something crazy, I want to do something wild and she was like, maybe you need to look at Justin Smith. You know, he's got that crazy edge, he's got that wild, something different, but it's very restrained at the same time. It's not too crazy, it's not too out there, and it's not too wild, but it still breaks that norm of what a headwear should be. And ever since then, I've really followed Justin. I've kind of stopped, not stopped him a little bit, but, you know, I've always looked at what he's doing, you know, Getting inspiration, I'm not a copy, but it's like when you when you have a natural affinity with somebody's design, it's like right, this is the sort of area I want to go in. You know, I kind of moved into more three D printing, wearable technology, but still, it's something different. It's something that people don't expect to wear on the head. And these pieces that I've shown, I think there's a couple which are quite traditional I suppose but mm, quite a few of them are like you know a little out there um, and I've always followed him I've always liked him I've always liked his style I've always liked his aesthetic and he's a very handsome man as well you know I mean I don't know if you've seen pictures I'm not sure if I can put them up but definitely google Justin Smith and you'll be able to see what I mean he's, he's a very attractive man so that's always a plus in my eyes I also think Justin makes things that makes you think um, and question what is it about I mean I don't have an image once again Google it Google search this Justin did two pieces which were made out of cocktail umbrellas I mean when I saw it I was like that is 
amazing. Don't know how you even thought of that, but that is amazing. Has anybody seen the film Maleficent? Now, I actually haven't seen the film, so I mean, I know the story, da, 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 but I haven't seen the film. Um, but we all know that iconic Angelina Jolie Maleficent image and Justin actually made the piece for the film. Now, how amazing is that? You know, a UK millionaire making a piece for such a top grossing film. Disney, I mean, you know, what better accolade for a UK millionaire to get involved in the film industry? Now, due to copyright, I can't show you images, but what I can do is I'm trying to insert like a little bit of video, do a Google search and you'll be able to see this Maleficent piece if you don't know what I'm talking about and if you don't know what I'm talking about once you've seen this piece you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's talk about my personal top five pieces made by Justin Smith. Now this is my view, these are my opinions. Um, I haven't asked, I did reach out to Justin Smith's team and they gave me some information and permission to use the images so thank you very much for that um, but I didn't ask on materials I didn't ask on techniques because I don't want it to be seen like I'm trying to copy I literally I reached out for the purpose of this video so these are my views these are my opinions I may be wrong in what I say um, but this is definitely you know my top five and I will give you reasons for so this first piece is from his latest collection titled Gold and if you haven't seen the collection I suggest you go to his website right now which will be listed in the description box below. This to me looks like a disc style percher and it appears to be made out of a foil fabric. Now I'm assuming it's leather, it looks like it would be a foiled leather to me. And this has been simply finished off with a feather plumage which has been encased in gold at the bottom. Now the title of the piece says Egret, so once again I'm assuming the feathers are Egret feathers which have been dyed black. After reaching out to Justin to ask permission for the images, I received a little information about the gold collection and he, what was said was each hat has an individual name that evokes what might be described as Hollywood's golden era. Now Justin did an interview with Diane Pernet of A Shaded View on Fashion and in that interview he mentioned the gold collection and this is what he said. For me, the word gold can encompass a number of different things. Gold was the progression from black, which was the name of my last collection, a much more sombre and under the radar collection. The gold collection is a celebration of the 10th year of my brand, J. Smith Esquire. It represents a lighter collection for summer, centered on gold textures and encompassing many different types of material, particularly straw. The collection is underscored by the theme of the golden age of Hollywood, which is also reflected in the names of individual pieces. I wanted to create and communicate that richness, sparkliness and sense of luxury that we associate with Hollywood glamour. Now, if you actually look at the collection as a whole and look at the previous collection, Black, you can actually see how he used Black as accents in this collection, which shows that progression from the previous collection. Now, for this piece, I just love the simple look of this piece, yet it looks luxurious, it looks statement-like, it looks elegant, it's just a beautiful, simple piece. And this is why it made my number five. Now let's move on to number four. So for this piece, there isn't a lot of background information on this collection, so I can't give you anything regarding the collection as a whole, but the collection does consist of traditional hat shapes, which have all been hand dyed to give this stunning effect. And on top of this, in this actual collection, there are some beautiful couture parrot headdresses where each individual feather appears to be made by hand. And this was finished off with Venetian style masks, which sparkle between some Swarovski crystal chains. And for those of you which are viewers of this channel, like long term viewers, you will know my obsession with Swarovski, sparkle, crystal, sparkle, basically anything that glitters, I adore. Now this actual piece is a straw hat in a trilby shape, and it has been double dyed with the cloud pattern, which I believe means each piece will be totally unique because you won't be able to get that same exact pattern. 
However, it does very much remind me of the painting The Son of Man by Rene Magritte. I don't know if I've said that name right. And according to Wikipedia, his actual mother was a milliner as well. But the print on Justin's hat is a lot more vibrant than the clouds in the image. But that when I saw that, that was the first thing that 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 first thing that I thought of was that painting, The Son of a Man. And what I like about the why this makes my number four is it's the print. It's totally different. And if I actually had the money, I would buy one. Like I oh my god, like I would love to have gone on holiday with this hat and just be like, oh my god, that's like so different. I'm like, yes, it's Justin Smith. Um so yes, I think this might actually go have to go on my Christmas list. So Mr Other Westwood Hill beware this is going on my Christmas list. So that's my number four. Now let's check out my number three. This piece was from Justin's third independent collection and the following information is taken from the lookbook for his collection. Kaleidoscope is a collection of fascinating handmade millinery pieces that can be worn singly or in clusters coming together to make up any number of ingenious combinations from pop-up sun hats to origami headbands, fringes and finger waves, buttons and bows, dream catchers and foil block feathers, endlessly combinable, uncontrollably creative, mesmerizing, sparkly, interchangeable shapes that are seen and not seen, there and not there, suspended as if by magic, combined together to make amazing multi-part hats that are more than the sum of their deliciously colorful parts. Oh my word. I mean, that, that alone is just enough to get you tantalized by this collection. And this particular piece, what I loved was the metallic feathers. Now this piece is made from a foil block ostrich feathers, uh, copper wire, copper coins, and the dream catcher is by Thomas Dunosik. Now, oh, I love a metallic feather. I don't know why, I just do. So I was immediately drawn to this piece. And when I saw it and the collection as a whole, I was like, wow. All those interchangeable pieces to create like a complete unique style. You know, you, you go out and you buy a hat and you think that's the hat, but with this collection, you can just mix and match and create your own piece. I mean, obviously there's only limitations on what you can do, but it's, it's wonderful. I mean, if you get a chance to go to his website, check out the lookbook, check out the combinations. Wow. That's all I have to say. Like, it is beautiful. And this piece is really standout. And I'm very surprised I didn't see a lot more of this foil feathers in other people's collections. Because it's very much a statement piece. And this piece, I, I just adore. I just adore, really. So that is my number three. Uh, can you guess what's coming up next? So coming up is my next top two pieces by Justin Smith. Stunning is a word that I use way too much. But if you opened a dictionary, you would see this image next to that word. Now, I am not being paid to, to, to promote this. I'm not being a nothing like that. This is just my personal view. I love this image. Like, uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. Um, this piece is actually from his 2011 collection, Illuminated, which was an eclectic mix of couture and ready-to-wear pieces inspired by vintage Italian fashion papers to create a modern-day Edwardian couture, which was light and airy, imbued with luxury. And that was taken from his lookbook, which the following bit is also taken from his lookbook too. Glass bead birds nestle amongst a starburst of colourful flowers. Beaded fabrics glitter behind organza and silk chiffon windows. Rays of sunshine shimmer through gorgeous stained glass colours. Now, this particular piece, I love the pleating. I love the colours. I love the beadwork. And it's very unusual shape for a turban. To me, it has more of a futuristic alien head shape to it than your Edwardian turban. But my references could be totally off as I'm such a sci-fi geek. I love, like, weird 
trashy sci-fi made for TV it's not been never been released and you find it in the depths of Netflix and it's like two hours long the acting is bad that's not that's the sort of film I kind of referencing and that's the sort of film that I like so yeah that's why that's the sort of look I get I can cone heads don't anyone remember that that's the look that I'm kind of getting from this but it's beautiful though it's not I'm not dissing this it's my number two now I'm not too fully sure but I think the glass beads across the sort of like chest area are actually part of this piece I didn't see them in any other image in the collection so if you wear this piece you don't actually need jewelry to go with it which is a bonus you've saved yourself on the jewelry you know if I was wearing this I wouldn't wear anything glamorous on your ears you don't need to because the statement would always be on the hat although saying that what would you wear this with let me know in the comments down below T tell me what what sort of look would you wear this with um i'd love to know what you guys think so that's my number two um and we're moving on to my number one piece by j smith esquire oh, oh my god this piece has really stood out to me so much like I even used this collection as a frame of reference while I was studying and we had to make a piece for the felt makers competition and I ended up making something which on hindsight was pretty tragic but I was still learning what worked and what didn't work of which I'm still doing and I just kind of took inspiration on this collection in terms of um, that weird tr like style shapes um, unusual materials and this was the collection pretty much where I well yeah I, I would say pretty much solidified my sort of like love of Justin Smith's aesthetic so once again there's not really much information on the collection in the lookbook but there was a little poem in the lookbook and I'm just going to read that out to you now Long ago, a shipwrecked girl was washed ashore. Inside a chest, she found much finery. Gathering more treasures, she fashioned fine things to wear. Her days were soon filled with otherworldly friends. Today, she's queen of that faraway paradise. So, if you take the first letter from each sentence it actually spells out light <sighs> yes the, i mean this collection was amazing and it was my four, most favorite collection ever and it was an early one for justin this particular image though really stood out to me it was the textures it was the muted palette the really unusual materials i just love 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 this collection and this particular piece ah um it's actually made from knitted cotton string sea urchin shell and shells with the rope necklace being made from cotton rope and snail shells but the thing is i can just imagine the necklace as a headpiece in this collection too it's wonderful it's stunning it's unique for sure and that's why this particular one makes my number one spot in my top five favorite pieces by j smith esquire so there you go what did you think which is your favorite hat um did I any of your favourite hats from Justin Smith make my top five? Sound off in the comments below, tell me what you liked, which was your favourite in this top five, and if yours wasn't there, let me know which one you would prefer to see in my top five. Make sure you follow me on all my social media if you haven't already done so. So we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Snapchat, and we also have Patreon. So I look forward to seeing you next week for a Percha tutorial, which I've been working very hard on. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Moschino. Moschino. See, I thought it was Moschino, but it's Moschino. See, oh, there we go. How to say fashion brands in English? Here we go, it's got a loop. Oh, what's going on here? Okay, Tommy Hilfiger. Matt Jacobs, everybody must have to say that. Burberry. Oh. Hermes.
Hermes, yes. I know that one. I've never really heard of that. Okay, I've never heard of those. Maybe Tom. Oh, right, here we go. Adidas. See, I thought it was Adidas. Adidas. I thought it was Adidas. Maybe I'm just like Northern. Here we go. Everyone knows how to say that, I think. Which one? Who? Moschino. 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 Right. That's how we said it all then. And what else have we got? Oh. I say, I know that one, I'm a fan of drag queens at the house of Balenciaga. Milano Black. Manolo Bonnet. Oh, Manolo. So it's Moschino. Okay. <coughs> Justin also has collaborated with high fashion design brands such as Stella McCartney and Moschino.